So we're in the fire cave. There's always going to be a fire cave in one of these games. Fire cave, fire mountain, fire dungeon, whatever. Oh, there's a thing over here. Fire ward. Is that a... Is that an item you equip? Or... Yes. Increases resistance to... Fire attacks. There was a feature in Breath of Fire 3 that I sort of appreciated to an extent, but was kind of something that felt a little bit unnecessary as the game went on. And really, like in any subsequent playthroughs, I felt it was kind of dumb to even <laughs> even try it, try using it, because, um, well, anyway, what the hell am I talking about? Uh, in Breath of Fire 3, you had these pharmacies that you could visit, and when you went there, you could pay to have your character's elemental resistance increased for a period of time. I think that it essentially lasted as long as your character did before you rested either at an inn or a campsite. So if you went outside and then stepped at a camp, that resistance would just disappear. Now it seems like a pretty cool idea. Can I walk on this? Yep. What am I here for? What is the... There's nothing on this thing. It just leads me back to where he started. Well, anyway, whatever. Just a different way through. Now, it, it was really useful the first time I played the game. When I was going through Mount uh, Zubo, I think it was called, the Fire Dungeon of that game because I was actually like for some reason despite the game not really being that hard I was struggling to get through this section the first time I played and increasing your character's fire resistance was very useful but any subsequent playthrough that I've had of the game it's just so easy that like I never really feel the need to do that plus there aren't a lot of uh, like, purely... Oh, he's healing himself. Hmm. There aren't much in the way of, like, true elemental dungeons. Like, there's the fire dungeon that mount, mount something. And then there's... You know, I don't think there are any more. So it was really on that one part. Like, okay, so if I know that I'm going to be encountering some... Oh, cutscene. What is this? Oh, so it's like a puzzle. You gotta move your way across. Money, okay. So, do I have to get into another fight to have it move again? If so, this could be really annoying. <laughs> I can start skipping over this fight. During that battle, Nina got hit by a flare, and uh, she took no damage. Alright, so it's every battle you get into. So, everything moves with every battle. So there we go. So I just run in a circle until I get into a fight. Alright, so this is it. Is this it? Yep, there we go. It's gonna be irritating constantly being caught up in having to um, get in the fights in order to find my way around, but you know, okay. I'd say in this game they did a much better job with the character of Nina, this version of Nina, in making her an actual, like, um, powerful character to have in your party. Now, the character wasn't particularly bad.
bad as far as characters go in the third game. But as a, like, a combatant, she was very limited in terms of her utility. Because she was like your typical uh, black mage style of casting character. One that has weak physical attacks, weak defense, but she's got a lot of a lot of magic spells and stuff like that. So this is a pretty common type of character. And there really isn't anything wrong with that. But the problem is I think that they balanced her a little bit poorly. So she had very weak physical stats, both in attacking as well as defense, low HP as well. Now uh, you'd balance that out with having more powerful magic attacks, but the problem you get with a lot of mage type characters though is that most of them are not capable of just like um, spamming their magic attacks infinitely. They're going to run out of MP or AP or whatever you want to call it eventually. So that would result in um, a character with potentially a limited lifespan as far as utility goes going through a dungeon. So you've run out of magic halfway through the dungeon, that character suddenly becomes useless. That was something that that Nina in 3 had a chance of doing, and especially since items which recover AP are somewhat rare in that game, you run the risk of a character who's not that powerful to begin with suddenly becoming even weaker in the middle of a dungeon. Also, her magic attacks... Like, unless you matched her attacks up with the elemental weaknesses of enemies, which is a little bit hard to tell other, sometimes, other times maybe they don't even have weaknesses, she becomes, um, her magic attacks are no more powerful and sometimes just weaker than the physical attacks coming out of other characters. So she's kind of like the weakest of the characters in a lot of ways, in most ways. This game, they balanced her out much better. In fact, I'd actually say maybe she's a little bit overpowered. Because not only does she have the magic spells, although she seems to not actually have that many spells. They are reasonably powerful. She's also a healer, so she's sort of like a red mage. Using Final Fantasy logic. But she has a decent enough physical attack. So you can, on a backup, rely on that if you need to. So her, she's maybe balanced a little bit too good. I figured this would be a cutscene, that's why I paused out there. <laughs> Are you in a... okay, it looked like a wooden house from the outside, didn't it? Make another one? Really? <laughs> Those little fairy bitches? <laughs> it didn't work out that well for us last time we uh, encountered these fairies. There's two exits here. Oh, is this an exit from the dungeon? No, it's not. Oh, it is. Um, where am I? <laughs> you know what? That's actually a little bit of a... A little bit of an advantage... An easy way out. So I don't have to run all the way through the dungeon the next time I want to talk to this fool. Uh, I'm not going to end the episode right away. I got my next objective. But I'm going to take another look inside of here because there was that other exit. And there's got to be something down here. Now, is that it? Molotov. Or, that's not 
gonna do me a lot of good here. <laughs> oh, so I got a level up for Nina when I was in that. Uh, you can see, though, that the master that I paired her up with is having an effect. Her power did go up, but by one point, I'm guessing it would have been two. So eventually, um, thanks to the master system, master apprentice system in this game, just like in Breath of Fire 3, she's, um, it affects her stat growth. In fact, any character's stat growth. So, even though she's, I mean, it, she's not as good of a physical attacker as she was earlier on in the game, and because of this master that I paired her up with. But, uh, eventually, as the game progresses, she's going to phase out of being useful as far as physical attackers go and become more dependent on her magic, but that's probably going to make her a more powerful character, I think. I guess that means I have to go back to where I was. Yep, okay. <laughs> Just letting us run out and about. Shouldn't you, like, be preventing us from leaving? <laughs> but anyway. That dungeon there. Uh, let's, uh... Honestly, I'm not playing this game, like, straight through. I'm taking long breaks. So I can't <laughs> actually remember where the fuck I was when I, um, ran into the fairies before. Oh, I guess it was here. All right, so, yeah, I'll, uh, use this as a chance to end the episode. I'll pick up the next one immediately, though. <laughs>